In 2023, TikTok food critic Keith Lee embarked on a tour where he visited several cities across America to experience their local restaurant scene. Undoubtedly, Atlanta GA was the most chaotic. If you remember, one restaurant's operator and its workers wanted to nug if you buck. After his review went viral, it was crazy. Now in 2024, Keith Lee is back on tour and he wanted to give Atlanta another try. We decided as a family, we're gonna do a redemption tour. Let's talk about it. Last year, we went to 10 states on a family food tour. This year, we went to about three so far. And we discussed as a family that it only be right to do a redemption tour because the states we did this year were different rules, different categories, and different structures. So just to be fair, we're gonna start at the bottom of the list. Atlanta, we coming back. Now this is a redemption tour. It's separate from the food tour, meaning we not doing a revisit, meaning we not going to the same spots that we went to last time. This is a completely fresh slate, clean slate. We're going to new restaurants and new areas and we're going to use the new categories. Meaning we're going to mom and pop spots. We're going to order popular spots voted on by y'all on my IG story and spots from different ethnicities and different cultures. We come in peace. With that being said, we will be protected. It's people with us that are legal and licensed. We don't want to have to use them, but we will. My family are getting home safe. And I mean that with every bone in my body. We getting home safe, we just come to eat food, meet the people we supposed to meet, do what we supposed to do. Mind our business. Nothing else, nothing more. For you to understand why Keith wanted to go back to Atlanta, we're gonna have to take it back to his first stop in Atlanta. Let's get into it. Social media food critic Keith Lee took a trip to Atlanta with his family where they went all over the city, went to Six Flags, and of course, he had to go to several restaurants for his famous restaurant reviews. When I say he had the whole Atlanta falling out, windmilling on these social media streets, from TikTok to IG, yeah, he was in ATL. And while he was there, some restaurants experienced the Keith Lee effect, a smaller version of how the Oprah effect used to be. At least three different restaurants had almost no customers, but after Keith gave them positive reviews on TikTok, the parking lots went from zero and crickets to packed out parking lots and people busting out the doors. You know, when you got about 14 million viewers, over 600 Ooh. million views, you know, you're not so big of a deal, right? <laughs> then for other restaurants, it was like a nightmare. Lots of going back and forth, and you even had some folks experience death threats. We found out some of these angry so-called fans went popping off at the wrong restaurant. I'll explain that in a second, but first, take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. The word of the day is excellence. In the food business, we have to normalize excellence again. Excellent food, excellent customer service, excellent food safety. Everybody watching right now, do me a favor, drop excellence below in the comments. And this goes for everybody, not just black restaurants, all colors, small mom and pop locations, to larger restaurants and chain restaurants as well. If you're not a part of the TikTok community, you probably recently heard about Keith Lee for the first time on his food tour in Atlanta. Keith Lee is 27 years old from Detroit. He's been doing food reviews since 2021 in Vegas. He's got two small children with his lovely wife. He's a former MMA fighter, but it was TikTok where he was able to be successful and that's what made him famous. Although it's been a lot of talking down on Atlanta lately around here, we all know if you want to make some shake and really get it popping, impacting American culture, you gotta one, go down south, and two, you gotta go to the ATL. From television to the big screen, music, media, finance, one of America's top cities for logistics after the beautiful Chicago, shout out to Memphis and Houston too. We're talking about Atlanta, not just Black Hollywood, but a major hub in the Southeast and the home of the busiest airport in the world. We top flight security of the world, Craig. Yes, the world. So of course I understand. Keith Lee had to check out Atlanta and test the temperature of the city's Southern hospitality or some would argue the lack thereof. I have to be honest, this new Atlanta is not the same as the old Atlanta. But Keith Lee hopped off the plane and exposed the city's restaurant scene. The customer service was interesting. While the people were nice, the rules they had set were very unique to me. We initially tried to do takeout, but when we came in, they said we couldn't sit down and there was no space at the bar for us to stand. So we had to stand outside and order our food. And then we decided we just gonna dine in. But two people in our party stepped out for a second. Cause again, we fresh off the plane. So everybody's trying to get situated. The waitress, again, she was nice, but she told us she couldn't take any orders or she couldn't do anything until everybody sat down. No water, no coffee, no drink orders, no nothing. She also said they can only do one order and there's no add-ons. 
Like, if you want to add on afterwards, it's a wrap. One order for the whole table. She wouldn't even explain the menu to us. First stop right off the plane, Keith Lee took his family to the Breakfast Club. Five adults, two kids. Spent $144.60. It sounds like he hinted that the waitress wasn't that patient. She really didn't want to explain anything on the menu. They also charged $1 for a little squirt of butter. The butter's a dollar. The butter a dollar? Yeah, that's Swear to God. The butter a dollar? At a breakfast place? Swear to God. That was like... And that's the little cut. That little cut. Yes. But I am fought in the fact that it don't come with jelly. And butter is a dollar. That's crazy. So they give you dry biscuits and make you pay for the condiments? I just can't. And the store of one dollar can get you at least one or two sticks of butter. But what he said he noticed right away was that a lot of these mom and pop restaurants in Atlanta had a lot of rules. Rules he had never heard of before. Another thing he noticed was that it was almost impossible to order takeout or pickup orders in Atlanta. We in Atlanta, I haven't been able to call my order in at 95% of the places I went to. We called the number they had connected on Yelp three times, no answer. We tried to order through DoorDash and it said it was temporarily closed. So when we pulled up, I sent my family in to order for us. They said on the weekends due to being busy, they don't do any takeout. Cardi B saw what Keith Lee was doing in town and was happy that he was highlighting a problem that she too experienced living in Atlanta ordering food. I always say this, like it's something about the restaurants in Atlanta. I don't know, is it because I'm from New York, right? And I feel like in New York, people just love to make money. I feel like in Atlanta, it's always something like first thing first, right? I feel like Atlanta restaurants, they don't like to make money. I feel like they don't like people. They don't like their customers. They just don't f like it. First thing first, right? You could barely order in Atlanta restaurants. Like you go like, hey, I would like to make order. Oh yeah, we don't make, we don't we don't take orders. We don't take orders. It gets to the point that I literally have to name like I have to tell like people that order food for me like, can you just name drop my name? Because first and first, they just don't they don't do no pickup orders. They don't do deliveries. They just don't do. Shit. One restaurant that made the Jumbotron was Candy's Restaurant, The Old Lady Gang. That's Candy from The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Some of you may know her from the 90s R&B group Escape. One of the only true Fulton County representers on Keith Lee's food tour. He gave her a bad review, but he didn't actually try her food. But yeah, Candy is Fulton County. A lot of the others are transplants from other places. I still have to be honest about Candy's brand. I would say that Candy's average patron is a tourist. Her restaurant is a destination spot where people go to try to run into Candy or see if they can spot any other celebrities or people they've seen on TV at the restaurant. And because of that, it's always packed. And for whatever reason, they don't have the systems in place or the staff to accommodate the large crowds. That's why when Keith got there, they told his family the wait was an hour and a half and they didn't have takeout staff available one of their rules, no takeouts on the weekends. Yesterday, me and my family were at the One Music Festival. Somebody who works with Candy Birds walked up to us and said they've been trying to reach us since we got to Atlanta. He said he'd been constantly emailing me and constantly DMing me for me to come to Old Lady Gang. I got it. Let's try it at rating 1 through 10. As you can see, I don't have any bags in my hands. Me and my family showed up and we attempted to order before we got here. We called the number they had connected on Yelp three times. No answer. We tried to order through DoorDash and it said it was temporarily closed. So when we pulled up, I sent my family in to order for us. They said on the weekends, due to being busy, they don't do any takeout at all. They do to go order? No, we don't do food on the weekend. Oh, okay, so sit and dining. Yes. Okay, thank you, sweetie. We appreciate you. Which is completely understandable. So what we decided to do is my family's gonna go eat. They're gonna come bring the food out while I'm sitting in the car. So they have no idea I'm here. My family asked how long the wait was to be seated. They said an hour to an hour and a half. Yes, hour and a half. Okay. She also said they didn't have any reservations available. So they didn't take down any number, any contact information, nothing. Now they told Keith Lee's family that the wait will be an hour and a half, but when he showed up himself, you know, they recognized him. He's got millions of followers on TikTok. Told him the wait would only be five minutes. My family then came and relayed that message to me and I decided to go in myself. We walked in and we were greeted by a nice young lady. And then I met some amazing people who were eating there and we took some pictures. God is amazing. As soon as me and my wife were done taking pictures, the lady said the table was ready. As always, I don't want any special treatment. I want to be treated like everybody else. I pay for my food like everybody else. I'm a normal person. I'm a normal customer. Things like this is exactly why I do reviews the way I do. Just because I have a certain amount of followers on social media don't make me different from nobody. My mom, my mom-in-law, my sister, they all paying customers just like me. So I want them to be treated just like me. So I asked how long the wait time has been today. She said an hour to an hour and a half. So which I then asked, how are you able to sit me in five minutes? 
this is her response. How long was that before it fired? I'm just gonna sit up Again, my family just attempted to eat there less than two minutes ago. I didn't tell her I changed my mind. We're gonna go eat somewhere else, and I said God bless you, and I walked out. On second thought, it's okay. We we gonna go to eat somewhere else. So I appreciate it though. Keith didn't like this. He believes normal customers should be treated with the same respect as celebrities. But again, we all know Atlanta is Black Hollywood. This same thing happens all the time at very popular restaurants in LA and in other cities too. It's not exclusive to Atlanta. So no, I'm not gonna sit here and that like famous status won't give you different treatment. The lesson Keith thought he was teaching candy staff was to treat every customer the same. I agree, everyone should be treated with respect, but let's be honest and stop playing. The real lesson is if your family went out alone, they would have to wait an hour and a half like a normal person. If your family went out with you because you're famous with 14 million followers, they don't have to wait. The difference is you have fame and influence that can make or break a restaurant and because of that, your status just gave you the Biden or the Trump effect or the Beyonce and Rihanna effect. Just like when you bless a business with your presence, you give them the Oprah effect. If you're really an average person, your presence won't give the Oprah effect. You know why? Because nobody would care. And that's one thing I didn't understand. To act like you don't understand why Shelly gotta wait an hour, but if Barack Obama and Michelle walked in, they're sitting down right away. And hey, we may not like the rules, but that's how society is set up. Then he had a similar issue at the Real Milk and Honey ATL. And I wanna say off top, that is not the same restaurant as Milk and Honey ATL. It's two different companies that's been mixed up in this whole debacle, and it's just a shame. It started when Keith went to the Real Milk and Honey ATL, that's College Park, Georgia. It's on Main Street. That's where Keith and his family also had issues placing a to-go order, but eventually decided to go in one hour before they closed. And well, take a look. We are at the Real Milk and Honey on Main Street in College Park. Before we came, we attempted to call our order in. We were greeted with an automatic message that said they do not take call-in orders. The automatic message said the only way you can do pickup is through DoorDash. We went through DoorDash, they was closed. But online, it said they closed at five o'clock. We went on DoorDash at four o'clock, but we were already here, so we just went inside. I stayed in the car and my family went in and they told them they were closed early for deep cleaning. Yet the door is wide open and it's people still going in and grabbing their orders. Now we have no idea if those people ordered beforehand or what the case is. Also, the people who relayed this message, my family said were really nice. It's just the rules. And so far being in Atlanta, I found some places do have unique rules and this is one of them. I want to be very clear we're not blaming one person or saying one person was rude. In plain terms, don't call this restaurant trying to get nobody fired. Ain't nobody do nothing. This is just the rules they had. If you don't like their rules, the rules not for you. And for me and my family, the rules just went for us. We just not their target audience. For the record, afterwards, I did walk in and I did record and they attended the services, but I respectfully declined. I'm a normal person. I pay for my food like everybody else. I walk in spots like everybody else. We are all normal people. Respectfully, if you're not gonna do it then, don't do it now. It was a big blow up online. The folks over at The Real Milk and Honey got real disrespectful, saying to everybody, why would we be listening to an autistic person? That's when you have millions of people defending Keith online and they started attacking the restaurant. The negative response further angered Keith Lee's fans who started threatening them, making calls, leaving bad Yelp reviews, and then here's the worst part. The problem escalated and ended up impacting a restaurant that had nothing to do with this. That was Milk and Honey ATL. Not to be confused with the real Milk and Honey ATL, the actual restaurant where Keith Lee went. And according to Milk and Honey, the owner said their restaurant was out before the real Milk and Honey, but because the names are so similar, the original Milk and Honey called the backlash from the restaurant called The Real Milk and Honey. We have been following how some Metro Atlanta restaurants benefited from reviews by TikTok influencer Keith Lee, but what about the restaurants whose reviews weren't so positive? There's been a lot of talk about this on social oh, yeah. media, yeah. Teresa Bulls found out how these restaurants are dealing with this backlash. The Milk and Honey restaurant wasn't even reviewed by influencer Keith Lee, but they received death threats because people got it mixed up with the real Milk and Honey, which is 20 minutes away. As a restaurant owner, Devin Green is used to reviews. It's already a hard industry and uh, reviews are good, positive or negative. But he wants to earn them. This is the Milk and Honey restaurant, not to be confused with the real Milk and Honey, which got a not so great review from viral food critic Keith Lee last week. And when it started affecting business, he had to say something. I'm bombed from negative comments, death threats, threats to blow the building up, threats to 
in our business. He would call on our phone. It was a nightmare. Lee's reviews also sparked conversations about Atlanta restaurant culture, rules and policies not seen in other cities. Green says despite the grass wall, that's not how they roll or waffle. We actually allow reservations. We have takeout to go. We use Uber Eats. We do a DoorDash. We actually uh, employ a person just to take, take, in, take out orders. The Atlanta Breakfast Club, though, explains why these policies Lee brought up, such as reservations and no call-ins, are important. We set guidelines to expedite service because we have so many guests and customers that come to Atlanta. We just want as many people as possible to be able to share it. Anthony Sanders' restaurant didn't get the best review either, but he's taking it in stride as he says most of their reviews are positive. I didn't feel that what he said was offensive. It was a, a perspective from someone coming from Detroit, coming to Atlanta for the first time. Sanders says the Atlanta Breakfast Club has been around for a decade, one of the pioneer black-owned breakfast restaurants in Atlanta. Lee put out a video discouraging fans from spreading hate. If anything, Sanders hopes the reviews can be used to bring restaurants together. It allows us to observe and adjust. Will we do things better? Of course. Come in and know for yourself, and because I do believe that we have some of the best guest service. In Atlanta, Teresa Bowles, 11 Alive News. Hey, you can go out there and try them for yourself, all right. I know, it's crazy. It's really a shame. I think the real Milk and Honey is wrong for taking these people's name if it's true that Milk and Honey was in business first, but at this point, the damage is already done. Both brands have been mixed up together, and all of this is just absolutely out of order. I really feel bad for the milk and honey that had nothing to do with this. Then there was another restaurant he went to in the city. He had a similar experience as the real milk and honey and Candy's restaurant, but they ended up convincing him to stay. We went to the Toast on Linux timeline. We went to Olay the Gang, I shot the video, we left and went to Toast on Linux. Toast on Linux is where those two videos were taken. I had no intention on shooting the video, we just wanted to eat food. We walked up, it was a two and a half hour wait time, but the people that were waiting were dressed to the nines head to toe. On Sunday in Atlanta, people go to brunch, so they expect to wait. We didn't know that. They said it was a two and a half hour wait time. We said, okay, we're going to go somewhere else. While we walked out, the entire staff walked out behind us. They attempted to implore us to stay and said that we could sit down immediately. Again, I'm not the target audience for that. Usually I would just leave, but before we left, we saw two cars with two people in each car. So they were separate. It was two girls in one car over here. It was two girls in one car over here. One car had been waiting for an hour and a half. The other car had been waiting for an hour. One car was trying to do takeout. One car was trying to sit down. So again, the people that were waiting inside, that were dressed to the nines, they didn't mind waiting. But the people that were sitting in these cars, I didn't like that. So the owner and the manager walked out and they offered us a table for us to be able to sit out. We told them as a family that we would do takeout, but we wouldn't eat in the restaurant. And the only way we would do takeout is if they gave the table that they was gonna get us to the two girls that were sitting in this car, which they did. And on top of that, they had to make sure the girls that were sitting in this car got takeout before we did, which again, they did. The staff and the owner were extremely accommodating. They were nice, they were accommodating, they were professional. And again, that's just my experience. When we got the food, we all enjoyed it. I'm with Keith Lee on not being the audience for this type of setup because we're also not waiting anywhere for two hours or an hour and a half for some food. For people hanging out, visiting a city, or just trying to kill time, then maybe you'll be okay with it, but I'm not looking to waste time. So this is a big no-no for us and I don't blame Keith on that. No shade to the restaurant though. Obviously people like them and they love the vibe and there is a target audience for that, it's just not for me. All of this is why Keith Lee had the worst experience in Atlanta the first go around, but although it was pretty bad, three restaurants did experience the Keith Lee effect. One was totally empty when he got there. That was a restaurant in Fairburn, Georgia. From my understanding, it was always like that. Not much business at all, but according to Keith, they had good food and decent service. In fact, the service was so good, he tipped the waiter $1,000. And when the owner wanted him to split the tip with all the staff, Keith went back to the waiter and told him because he was so good to his family, he wanted him to personally have the $1,000 tip to himself. So he took another $1,000, but he zelled it directly to the waiter and told him not to share with anybody. Now, like I said, when I was done with my food, I walked in and the guy that I met who was the waiter, he had some of the best customer service I experienced in a long time. My family was happy. I was happy. When I say attentive, nice, my family was being indecisive. We didn't know if he was going to do takeout. We didn't know if he was going to sit. He didn't care. We had two babies with us. Didn't care. 
amazing customer service the closest to a 10 out of 10 customer service i've experienced in a long time so much so when it was time to pay for our bill the bill was 76 dollars i tipped them a thousand dollars when i tipped them the owner asked was a tip for the whole staff i said yeah y'all can split it throughout the whole staff but then i tipped him personally another thousand dollars because yes the rest of the staff was really nice and the food was really good but that waiter he deserved every bit of it i came to him and from the whole time he kept good customer service I even flipped it from, I told him um, to go, then I switched it up, said no, I want to stay here. He still kept his composure, still, you know, gave good customer service. I want, so I'm want cool with the split the tip. I'm cool with everybody else, but I want you to personally know that we appreciate you. Thank you so sir. I want you to personally know so, the tip. So what's uh, your I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you? Where you at? Your <laughs> phone number, where you at? I'm gonna take another time. <laughs> oh God. And you say it's <laughs> last. <laughs> Thank you. And I didn't want him to split. I wanted him to be able to enjoy it by himself. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. Yeah, this part made me happy. I loved it. It was important for that waiter to get the blessing. And hey, I'm glad he got it. Not only was that waiter blessed along with the other wait staff, but the owner was also blessed after millions saw that review on TikTok. The parking lot was packed and they had a line out the door. Same for Juicy Jerk in Stone Mountain, Georgia. The owner of the restaurant, he recently passed away in a car accident, and now his daughter inherited this business. The daughter was struggling to keep the doors open, and she already had to close one location. Before Keith went down there, it was zero. Not many customers at all, but after he shared them on TikTok, they too experienced the Keith Lee effect. The line was around the corner and you had people that made reviews saying they had to wait three hours for their food. Yes, three hours. Then there was another Jamaican restaurant he blessed, Jamaican Jerk Biz in Mableton, Georgia. His family left Six Flags and it was really late. So they called ahead before arriving to the restaurant. It was almost 11 o'clock. That's the time the restaurant closed. And get this, they stayed open just for his family. But according to Keith, they didn't know it was him. The story is they thought it was a regular customer and they stayed open an extra hour to serve his family. Side note, I don't completely believe that. They knew Keith was in town and had already reached out to him, but I can say they did get tested and they passed. <laughs> After hearing her story and seeing the customer service, I was taken back. I asked her what were her sales for the day. I completely matched them. I said you didn't charge her yet, did you? No, no, no. Okay, for sure. Can I ask you a question? What sales did y'all make today? 2600 Can I pay you that? Can I pay you that? Can I pay you that? I want to match your sales for the day. Oh, He wants to match your sales. I want to match your sales today. So charge my car for 2673 Yeah, I'm dead serious, too. I'm dead serious. Charge my car for 2673 That's what she said she made when sales today. Match me. 2874. Now see, when you call me and you talk about God, you talk about favor. You know how many times you call me on the phone every day you talk about this? God said, when life becomes more than you can stand, just mm. get out your own way mm. and let me do it. Mm. God is amazing. Time for favor oh, and grace. My son has favor. So hold on. Listen, let me tell you something. Go give my daughter. You always say. Who don't, who has not. And God said, you walking in light, you gotta receive the light. Instead of crying, you need to rejoice. You hear what I'm telling you? Rejoice, because guess what? That man walked into your establishment and God put that on his heart. I took my gratuity. Why? Put the gratuity back on there. This interaction went viral. They experienced the Keith Lee effect, and now I'm sure they're doing way more than $2,800 in daily food sales. That's because when Keith Lee told everybody about the restaurant, the folks of Atlanta and the surrounding areas, they filled this restaurant up. That's another restaurant blessed by the power of this TikTok influencer. Overall, the good deeds he did for some of the restaurants won me over, like making sure the waiter in Fairburn got his tip even after the owner had the waiter split that first thousand dollar tip with the rest of the staff. And you know, him going to that one restaurant, matching their sales for the day, that was cool too. But the biggest impact was those restaurants going from like zero and him being able to easily call in and get them on the phone to the next day, people having to wait hours for food 
which ironically was the same critique that he had for restaurants like Candy's Restaurant. And although I agree with some of the stuff he said, I want to highlight this. For one, everywhere that's popular, booked and busy in Atlanta is going to be hard to get into. You notice the main reason why he liked those three restaurants that he helped the most was that he was able to call in the order or able to go inside because they didn't really have any customers. And I have to point out that all of those restaurants that he went to with the low traffic, those are restaurants outside of Atlanta. So less people knew about them because the owners did not market their restaurant and expected for everybody to know about it and come and patronize them. Versus the popular spots, they already had their name out there. They already had customers, which is why when he went to the old lady gang, the wait was an hour and a half. And honestly, you're going to have that issue at a lot of restaurants, even the chain restaurants. But I will say this, the chain restaurants, at least they have their to-go process together. You're not going to go there and not be able to order to-go. I agree, that's just crazy. You have millions of people living in this area, and everybody is always flocking to the most popular spots. That's any city you go to. When it's a popping restaurant and everybody's trying to get up in there, you're going to have to wait. If you and thousands of others like it too, but they only have seating for 100, the demand of business is high. Access is not going to be as easy as going to a restaurant with nobody there. That right there wasn't highlighted for people to understand that. Right in the middle of all the publicity that Keith brought to the business, I don't believe he'll be able to call those same restaurants and get his food within five minutes when they had a bunch of customers coming in. You have full reviewers that went to the restaurant after Keith made it popular and they had to wait three hours. Yeah, when you have no customers and no high demand or stress on the staff, they will always answer the phone. They have nothing else to do. You'll always be able to get in and out of there. And of course, they don't have any rules. They're not in the position to be so picky at this point. Before Keith went there, we're talking about places so desperate for business, they couldn't afford to turn business away. So they'll do stuff like stay open an extra hour when they already know Keith Lee is in town and they DM you a thousand times to come to their restaurant. Like this one right here, they had an indication that Keith Lee was coming. They didn't just stay open for a random person. They had an idea of what this was. So yeah, they're on their P's and Q's and yeah, they'll stay open an hour later when they know that when you show up to their restaurant, they're about to be blessed. Now here's the real test. Keith Lee, go back to those previously deserted spots that you got popping, and if they're just as popping as the popping restaurants, see if they have the same level of customer service. It's like being the unattractive nice person. The true test is when that person got a makeover and they start getting attention, are they still the same meek, nice person? And then with all the extra business, will they give their employees a raise? Of course not. While that one restaurant down in Fairburn made the waiter split his tip. That's why Keith went back and tipped him again. But I bet with all the extra money the restaurant made, they're not going around handing out bonuses. Will they hire more staff? Just like any other business, they're going to try to keep that to a minimum. You know, to keep costs down. Will they reinvest in the business? If the physical condition of the business is low and the appearance is low, will they give the business a facelift? Most of them won't and don't, and that's why a lot of restaurants fail. I also hate that Milk and Honey got dragged into this mess because they have no relation to the company that called themselves the real Milk and Honey. It's just crazy how that restaurant got clobbered by social media due to the mistaken restaurant name. And the Candy's restaurant got a bad review for the wait being too long. They didn't even eat there. I will say Candy's response to him was the most professional, so overall, I do believe Candy handled all this well, much better than the real milk and honey for sure. But yeah, Candy, you still need to figure it out and get your to-go service in order on the weekends. With that being said, I've watched Gordon Ramsay for years. I was a big fan of Robert Irvine. And let me tell you, if they went to any of these restaurants, they would have all of these folks crying or trying to fight. So when people say Keith was being mean, I don't think they know what mean is. Keith was not being disrespectful to anybody. I think he simply critiqued these restaurants on their ability to one, answer the phone and take it to go order, and then their dining customer service. And if he was able to taste their food, he critiqued that too. I think the restaurants with the long wait times got the bad end of the stick for simply being popular because the same thing he gave them bad ratings for, not taking to go orders and being too busy having to wait an hour and a half, the same restaurants he popularized now have the same issue. 
To be fair, I do not think he maliciously did anything. I watched his reviews. He's a very down to earth person. So I don't think he meant any harm. What I do like is that he sparked a much needed conversation about dining out. I often talk about these restaurant situations all around the country. Most of the time I speak on the need for customer code, basic code of conduct, but what Keith reminded us of is the code that should be established for these restaurants. I know in America it's all about profit over humanity. That's the corporate way, but today's consumer is not satisfied with that. Personally, if a restaurant isn't up to par or if a restaurant is just too popular, too crowded, too busy, we usually don't complain, we'll just find somewhere else to go. Or I'll cook for us at home before I put up with poor service or wait an hour and a half somewhere or three hours just to get a plate. Listen, we can just eat at home. I don't care if the owner is white, black, or purple. I can't do it. And in this day, eating out is so expensive. Doesn't matter what kind of food it is, it's a lot of money everywhere. Menu price is up 20%, 30% from just four years ago. So people are out here paying all this money and then these restaurants won't even answer the phone. And it's not just the mom and pop restaurants. I've seen this numerous times now since the pandemic with larger restaurants. If they don't have some type of online ordering system, it's not happening. Then they're up here closing early. If your hours say you close at seven, but every time a customer comes around there at six or 6.30 and y'all already broke the whole restaurant down. I've seen this at a lot of places around the country. And again, even at these chain restaurants and the larger restaurants, they'll get your order wrong and you can't even get them on the phone to correct it. And it's like nobody will be calling you anyway if you didn't forget to put them side salads in there. Up there charging $10 for a fourth a cup of spring mix. Not even a handful of salad. And you conveniently forget all of them. And here's the crazy part. You can make that same salad at home for 50 cents per serving. But I also understand when you go out to eat, it's not always about the price. It's obviously cheaper to eat at home and better overall quality, but customers go out to eat for an experience, to fellowship, sometimes to celebrate an occasion. So I get it. But when they go out, they want good customer service. Not only the service, but the atmosphere and the whole experience. Well, if everybody got an attitude and they're too impatient, how can you have a good experience? You got the wait staff just angry and entitled all at the same time. A lot of these places charging automatic gratuity. So they'll give you bare minimum service. Get mad they have to go back and forth for simple stuff like napkins that's already supposed to be there. And I don't understand that part. How do you get mad for having to do your job? And then for small restaurant owners, I also understand it's not easy. The margins aren't the best in the world, and it could be a struggle for most of them to stay open, which is why three out of five new restaurants will shut down within a year of opening, and four out of five restaurants will shut down within five years. Yeah, it's definitely a struggle, and even more difficult for black owners, because on top of the normal pitfalls that all new owners experience, they have a different set of issues. I just think that too many black restaurants think they could treat black customers any kind of way because most of us keep going. But that's gotta stop too. It's like some of them think black people aren't worth catering to. And I don't see how, because no one will be in their restaurant if it weren't for us packing it out. I think all restaurants, not just black restaurants, should maintain a high standard of excellence treat your customers right, train your staff, and establish a company culture of good service. And if you have staff that's rude to customers, you gotta get rid of them right away. That bad seed will tarnish the rest of your crop. Run it like Chick-fil-A. I always wonder what is it that they're doing over there? They always seem to have good customer service and they're always busy. Then let's talk about cleanliness. How hard is it to check the bathroom every 15 minutes? I'm just saying, some people are understaffed and others just have lazy staff. For the restaurant managers out there, if you don't have anything else, you need a bathroom attendant, table attendant, and a phone attendant and staff to service your to-go orders. I do believe that it's crazy that Candy is leaving all that money on the table, all because her staff isn't equipped to service to-go customers on the weekends. If business is booming like that, you can afford a solution. You know, and for all restaurants, just keep the place clean. Keep your tables, your seats clean, your floors, your plates and silverware. This is all basic stuff. Control the ratchetness. Customers with their kids running around the place is a no-no. And it's not just Atlanta with rules. In North Georgia, Blue Ridge Mountains, there's a diner up there 
and they don't have black customers like that. But yeah, they too have rules. They're making their customers mad out there, giving them fines for their loud, out of control kids. They said, if you cannot control your kids, they will fine you $50. And when people get hit with a $50 fine for their kid making a lot of noise in the restaurant, let's just say they're not happy about it. A North Georgia restaurant going viral on social media for having what's called a parent surcharge on their menu. And this is pretty interesting. The charge, according to the restaurant, is for adults who can't parent their children. Atlanta News First reporter Amanda Rose spoke to the restaurant today on Aska Road in Blue Ridge after a bad online review sparked a national conversation. I've never left a review in my life of a business. When I left there, we were leaving reviews. Brian Garciolo is still in disbelief after what he calls a nightmare experience at Tacoa Riverside Restaurant in Blue Ridge. The restaurant now gaining national attention for one-star reviews left by Garciolo's friends online, who say the restaurant wanted them to pay extra for bad parenting. He basically said he has raised his children, he's not going to raise ours. Carciolo, a restaurant owner who lives in Central Florida, says five families, including his own, visited the restaurant on vacation with 11 children, all under the age of eight. After finishing their meal, Carciolo says someone from the restaurant made a surprise visit to their table, saying the group should pay a parent surcharge. The fee is listed on the restaurant's menu next to three dollar signs and the words unable to parent. Carciolo says he thought it was a joke. The owner tells me he's had this parent surcharge on the menu since the pandemic, but he's never had to enforce it on any of his customers. He wants to emphasize that the charge is not for kids, but for adults who don't know how to parent. The restaurant says they never charge Carciolo and the others the fee, but they told us the group had to be, quote, really bad for them to bring it up at all. A representative for the restaurant went on to say there's nothing wrong with kids and families coming to the restaurant, but kids running wild through the dining room isn't parenting. Carciolo says all the kids were well behaved. I don't suggest the family go there. With the surcharge going viral on social media, some have called the fee discriminatory and vague. Others, like Lee Ellis, tell us he drove over an hour away just to pay the restaurant to visit. I think it's a good thing and I came because of it. In Blue Ridge, Amanda Rose, Atlanta News First. And this wasn't Atlanta, this is the Blue Ridge area. As you can see, there's a lot of conflict these days between patrons, owners, restaurant employees. This is happening in a lot of places at large restaurants and even mom and pop eateries. Out in California, they recently imposed a $20 minimum wage on fast food restaurants. A lot is going on in the restaurant industry. Keith Lee's first visit to Atlanta, it didn't go so well. So on his second stop, he just wanted to have a better experience. We decided as a family, we're gonna do a redemption tour. There's been a change of plans. Let's talk about it. The next time of the food tour is not Atlanta. Unfortunately, due to business reasons, it's been pushed back. But I appreciate y'all. Atlanta welcomed us back with open arms, and I'm thankful. Because of the last experience, I wasn't expecting that reception, and I'm thankful. I'm appreciative, I'm grateful. With that being said, the next stop on the family food tour is our first international stop, Toronto, Canada. Here we come. But as you see in the background, we are in Atlanta at the moment but we only gonna be here for a few days. So we're not gonna be here that long. And I didn't think it was fair to short anybody. If we gonna do it, we gonna do it all the way. I truly mean it when I say I'm thankful for the reception. I talked to some of my friends that are from Atlanta and we gonna do a community give back before we leave. So tomorrow, what's tomorrow? So tomorrow, <laughs> so tomorrow, April 3rd, 2024, we gonna rent out a food truck or a few food trucks and we gonna pass out food until it's gone, until supplies last. Today is the Atlanta event. We pulled up. We paid for 500 place in advance, thinking it was going to be 500 people there. The city said it was more than 500 people before it even started, so they shut it down. So we got to go to the second location. There's cops everywhere. Why they shut it down? How many people was there? Uh huh. What's the low? What that mean? I said, what that mean? Was a thousand? A thousand? God is amazing. <laughs> A rep from Nike pulled up with a shoe that comes out tomorrow and he only had a few sizes, but there was kid sizes. So we signed them and passed them out to kids. My friends Kai and Fennel pulled up and I can never be more appreciative or more grateful.
we personally only pay for one food truck to be there because again i was thinking 500 people or less so 500 places in my eyes was more than enough but god never makes any mistake all these food trucks you see put up on their own fruition and their own will at first i was very confused because i thought they was coming to charge and this was a free event but they passed out food for absolutely free God is amazing. I appreciate Atlanta. Y'all really showed up and y'all showed up. That's what this whole thing was about. Rewriting the narrative of the first time we came. An ice cream truck pulled up. A mobile barbershop pulled up. Monster pulled up. Y'all pulled up. Thank you again. I appreciate right. Atlanta. This is crazy. I, didn't, oh, yeah. I thought it was going to be a turnout, but I didn't think it was going to be this long. Really? I'm fired. All right, so that was Keith Lee's redemption stop in Atlanta. He accomplished his goal of leaving Atlanta in a better space than last time because the first time was completely chaotic. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Let me know what you think about this below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates so you never miss a new video. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and share.